everybody. I'm BJ Flagg. And I'm Rich G, and this is episode 342. Can you launch a successful business while working full time? Welcome back to the Best Small Business Show, your go-to resource for all things entrepreneurship and personal development. In today's episode, Rich and I are delving into the topic that many aspiring entrepreneurs face, launching a business while working full time and keeping it under wraps from your employer. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, a great topic. I actually did this. Uh, I was working at a company and I actually did it for like two and a half, three years coaching at night uh, bef- and really proved that I could do it and make money before I left my company. But a lot of people do this, BJ. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the, the best part is you have a renewed passion. You've got this passion and it's kind of bubbling up inside of you and really you can do this. You can definitely do it, but there are a couple of key points that you really need to focus on and yeah. understand that the timeline not, might not be the same as what you thought it would be. But y- if you do these things, you're going to see a nice success. So give it to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. The first thing we want you to focus in on is to validate the business idea. And I had to do this. I had to validate They say, is this going to work? Am I going to like doing it? Am I going to make money? You have to validate this business idea. So first and foremost, let's talk about validating your business idea without raising suspicion at work. And that's the most important thing. You got to keep your job conducting market research and testing your concept before fully committing is really essential is really essential. Yeah. And, and do you feel, Rich, that um, during that time it, and you're doing the research, a bunch of that can be done at night. You know, you get yeah. yourself a plan, you get together, a lot of that can be done at night. But then there's other parts where you got to start meeting people. Absolutely. We've got some action items, some things that you need to do if you are going to validate your, your idea. Number one is conduct discrete market research. Uh, and BJ and I can really attest to this. Utilize online surveys, forums, industry reports to gather insights without drawing attention to your activities. So really understand what the market is. You know, how many yeah. are there out there? Uh, what's the competition? What's the, is the industry growing? Is it shrinking? What's happening? Is it changing? Yeah. And you know what? The best thing you can do is test the waters. Start small by offering your product or your service to a select group of friends, family, online community to kind of gauge interest and gather feedback. Figure this time as times where you're um, market testing and and don't consider it you're in it. You know, the business has started. No, no, no. Just do it for testing purposes so that you can really hone in on every one of the little components. Yeah, I actually ended up talking to a lot of other coaches just to get their feedback about uh, what's going on in the marketplace, how they work with their clients and stuff. So I actually hired a coach. I actually worked with three coaches to test the waters. And then the final thing is, is shh. Keep it low key. Avoid discussing your business plans or activities at work. And this is going to be hard because we have this urge to let people know about this new thing that's happening to us to prevent potential conflicts of interest or confidentiality breaches. Yeah, especially if it's aligned with the business that you're working at you got to really be quiet. Um, This is, even if the business is still um, nascent, you need to have um, NDAs in place. So if you did take on a confidant or, you know, an associate or somebody, you have to have confidentiality agreements signed so that there's silence about whatever's going on. But the other thing is, this is the sad part, is there's going to be people at work who you've worked with for years and years and years, You can't share it with them. Yeah. You can't. You just got nothing. Um, And that's hard. 
you know, later when the business gets, go- you know, you've left, the business gets going, things like that, you can definitely begin that relationship again, but not during this time. That's for sure. Um, so this, I wanted to talk about time management and secrecy. And, you know, the importance of managing your time effectively while doing your entrepreneur endeavors um, hidden from your, you know, employer and your colleagues, that's essential. Yeah. And uh, the, you know, Rich, do, do you bump into this a lot of times when people are discussing ideas with you? You know, they want to start really getting out there and being a little loud about it, um, but they're jeopardizing. Yeah, they want to go out with a bang. In fact, I ran into this when I started my business. I I had a website out there that wasn't like it was just I was building it and I was just coaching at night. It had nothing to do with and it wasn't in competition with my company. And what was interesting was one day I came in and my boss was like, can you talk to me about this and he spins his monitor around and he shows me my website and I go, Oh, it's a hobby. I do at home on my own time and stuff like that. He goes, yeah, I, I, I really don't want you doing this. And he goes, you need to be a hundred percent focused on your work. And this kind of gives you their viewpoint. And I was like, yeah. he goes, well, you need to make a choice. And so I went right back to my desk, changed a a little code, and my website was totally off the grid. And I went back and I go, it's gone. He typed in the URL and it was gone. He goes, okay, you're all set. And that's all I needed to do. But yeah. I kept building my business on the side, uh, and, yeah. and 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 frankly, I'll be honest, he got fired at the end of the year. Ah! So it was it was it's great so to nice. see him go goodbye. And uh, I I ended up like about a year and a half later starting my business. So yeah, these yeah. things and, and, happen. And you can do it. Yeah, you can yeah. do it. You know, if you think of a great action item, create a separate work schedule. So allocate a specific time slots outside of your regular work hours to focus on your business without raising any suspicion. Um, You're going to have to talk to your significant other, your roommate, all the various players that this is extremely important to you. So you are going to be taking up time that you would normally be boating, (laughs) off golfing, (laughs) Uh, Another action item is use discretion with your communication. Set up a separate email. Avoid using company resources. Don't use your laptop, such as email and phone, for business-related matters. And consider setting up separate accounts for added privacy. Trust me, nowadays they could track everything. And if they... Keystroke entry? Forget it. I wouldn't put one thing. Yeah. Absolutely not. Um, And really, you know, we stressed it before, but maintain confidentiality to protect your interests and remain, you know, have that professionalism, avoid discussing sensitive business details or sharing company related information with anyone, anyone at work. Ah, It's the hardest thing. It is definitely. Well, our third area that we want you to focus in on is your financial planning and budgeting. It's so important Uh, because if you do start your business, you need to replace or expand on the money that you're making currently. So let's explore the financial aspect of starting a business while working full time and keeping it concealed from your employer. Okay, the first action item we really want you to do is to establish a separate financial account. Open a dedicated business bank account to track income and expenses separately from your personal and work finances. In fact, I would suggest that you you get an LLC and -hmm. you get registered with the state. Uh, get a federal ID number. So everything's on the up and up and it's separate. It's separate from your personal finances. Yeah. And I'm going to suggest that you get a bookkeeper or an accountant and your attorney involved because you got to get trademarked and you got to have everything all completely bundled up. This is where I talked about the timeline 
the timeline can stretch, uh, especially when you financially realize how much money you have to make every month and every week and every day to make up for your regular job and all that lovely insurance and all that lovely perks and extras. So there's, you know, you got to bootstrap cautiously start with a minimum investment and focus on the generating revenue organically to avoid raising suspicion from your financial activities at work. Mm -hmm. And then finally, keep your records discreetly. Securely maintain meticulous records of your business transactions and expenses to ensure confidentiality and compliance with financial regulations. And and a big thing is I had a computer at home and then I did stuff at lunch and on an iPad, you know, that was connected to my phone. So yeah. I wasn't on the network or anything. It, but I really tried very hard not to do any kind of business at work. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you can do it. You know, that that time, like going out for lunch to meet up, like for us, I needed to meet with every single printer I knew. Yeah. So at lunchtime, I would go and go to another printer, go to another person, go to a vendor, go to see somebody. So I was very busy at lunch hours, which was just how it had to be, you know, and it worked out. It worked out. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about maintaining that work-life balance. Last but not least, we want to discuss the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance while you're juggling a full-time job and a burgeoning um, business venture in secrecy. This is probably like the first time in your life where you've had to keep everything under wraps. So it's hard. Don't you think, Rich? Oh, my Absolutely. Gosh. When, when I did it, I was working uh, probably a 50, 55-hour week at work. I'd start work oh. at 30 and leave at 5. But then I'd come home, have dinner. I had two kids, a wife and two kids. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I spent time with them. And, he, and, and he at still 7 o'clock, yeah. yeah, 7 to 8 and 8 to 9, I coached two people. And then yeah. at 9 o'clock, I spent time with my wife and watched a little TV. And we went to bed at 11 and did it again and again. And I yeah. did that for two and a half years. Yeah. And, and to tell you the truth, I think you did something so important for your boys. You showed them determination, grit, and the ability to stay on that work balance, yeah. you know, and, and it was important. Right. And, and I think, well, obviously, your two guys are incredible. So, you know, it really has an effect. It really does. Um, you know, one of the things that you've got to do is set boundaries. You know, you got to establish clear boundaries between your work and your business activities to pursue burnout, you know, to not have any burnout happening and maintain a productivity on both areas. I'm sure that was hard for you, Rich, because think about like just the logistics of that you know you you were about an hour away from work you know there was time commuting yeah lots going on it was tough and uh big thing you really need to do and i did this is prioritize your self-care make yeah. time for activities that recharge your batteries and alleviate stress such as exercise meditation or hobbies to, to sustain your energy and focus. That's so important. I bet that was great. And you know what? You should seek support discreetly. And this is the beginning of you building your network of trusted advisors, mentors, and fellow entrepreneurs outside of your workplace to seek guidance and support without raising any suspicions, you know, and no confidentiality breach, breaches. That's the biggest thing. You want to be able to leave your job and have them be happy. You want them to give the give you the party. You know what I mean? You, you want to, them to leave and say, you did such a great job here. Hey, doors always open. Come back when you can. You know, that type of feeling. So don't, don't burn a bridge. This is not the time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. We've covered the ins and outs of starting a business while working full time and keeping it hidden from your employer.
Yes. And remember, with careful planning, discretion, and determination, you can pursue your entrepreneurial dreams while maintaining professionalism in the workplace. And that's all for today's episode. We invite you to share this podcast on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok with the hashtag, The Best Small Business Show. And we want to thank you so much for tuning into The Best Small Business Show. If this episode has been valuable to you, subscribe, follow, and share it with all the other budding entrepreneurs who could benefit. And that's it for this week. You can reach out to BJ at NewRenew.com and me at RichG.com. Thanks to our editor and producer, Richard Scalzo, and have an unbelievable week. Catch you later. Later.